All right, Brightsider, it's leg day! Sorry, armpit day was last week. Before we start burning the fat off those thighs, let's start with a good warm-up. Need to get the blood flowing, stretch those muscles and tendons, don't want to pull anything, Ow! like that. Jumping jacks Stand up straight with your feet together, arms at your sides. Jump, spread those feet, and swing your arms out and over your head. Then jump back to the start position. Imagine being stuck on a desert island and seeing a ship pass by in the distance. Jump and wave as if you were trying to give them a signal. Come on, this is your only chance! If you ate one chocolate cookie, you'd have to do jumping jacks for 7 minutes straight to burn those calories. Next up, squats. Stand straight up again, but your feet are hip-width apart. This time, imagine you're about to sit down in an imaginary chair. Keep that back straight. Your knees shouldn't go past your toes. Make sure they come to 90-degree angles. No half-squats on my watch. You can keep your hands clasped together in front of your chest, or extend them out in front of you to add some arm exercising to this leg party. When you build up strength in the thighs and glutes, you can add weights. If you feel tired, consider this. The world record for the number of squats done in one hour belongs to Patty Doyle from the UK. He was able to squat 4,708 times. Yeah, he can keep the record. Forward lunges. No, wait, sorry, that's lunges. Keep your upper body straight and step forward with one foot. Keep lowering until both knees are at 90 degrees. Hey, I didn't expect so much geometry and fitness. When you've reached this point, stand back up to the starting position. Make sure you keep your hips squared, that means facing forward, and your back straight. Keep your gaze straight ahead of you. Pro tip, helps when there's a TV there, or a donut hanging from the ceiling. Front lunges tone your thigh muscles perfectly and help burn fat around your waistline. And next exercise. Leg circles. Lie down on your back and raise one leg to the ceiling. Now make a big circle with it. Out, down until it's almost touching your other leg. Out on the other side and back up toward the ceiling again. Keep that leg straight the whole time. We'll do five of those clockwise and five counterclockwise on each leg. Imagine your foot is a magic wand and you're trying to cast a spell on your ceiling. Cobwebus disappearus! Nah, didn't work. The key to doing this exercise correctly is pacing. Do it slowly, we're not in a competition to see who can draw the most circles in the air. Doing it too fast won't work those thigh muscles as much. Okay, we're done with that one. On to glute kickbacks. Hey, I could go for a kickback. Get on all fours with your shoulders over your wrists and your hips lined up with your knees. This one's kind of tricky, so stay with me. Lift your left foot while keeping the knee bent at a right angle. Your thigh should be parallel with the floor, calf is perpendicular, if we're being particular, and don't make any big gesticulars. Straighten that leg out behind you, bring it back up, and lower it back down to the floor. Repeat on the other side. The secret power of this exercise is isolating the thigh muscles and using only them to lift your legs. The correct body position helps with this. The most common mistake is letting the belly droop. Flex your abs to keep your back straight. Also, make sure you don't move too fast and don't let your hips rotate. We'll give it some more work with the glute bridge. Lie down on your back. Bend your knees and plant your feet on the floor. Now raise your hips so that your body makes a straight line. Hold the bridge for a few seconds. <laughs> then slowly lower down. Ready when you are. Now don't rush it. Use the thigh muscles to lift the body, not the back muscles. You can do the single leg glute bridge. The steps are the same. You just lift one leg up. This style cuts your support points in half, so the thigh... <laughs> Also pronounced, so the thigh that's not lifted has to do twice the work. Okay, I think you got that one down just fine. <laughs> I saved the hardest for last. Burpees. It's tough. Stand up straight, legs hip-width apart. 
squat down, touch the ground, and kick your legs back up into a push-up position. Reverse it to stand back up. Repeat those steps, and we'll do as many as we can in 20 seconds. Here we go! I'm right with you! Try to do it slowly a few times, just to get used to the moves. When you get good at it, add a push-up when you're in a plank, and do jump when you stand back up. The human body has about 650 muscles. Right now, you're using almost all of them. Remember that chocolate cookie you had to burn off with 7 minutes of jumping jacks? With burpees, it only takes 3 minutes. Your heart is also getting an intense workout. This will have you burning calories long after you finish doing your burpees. After something like that, we need to cool down. You always relax your muscles and get your heart rate back to normal after any workout session. So, sit down, close your eyes, think about that milkshake. I mean, take in a deep breath. Now, exhale. Now, pull your legs forward and try to reach your toes without bending your knees. Okay, spread your legs out to the sides and try to bend forward as far as you can. Some people can touch their belly to the ground. I am not one of those folks. Where's that milkshake? But everything in moderation. Don't forget that it takes about two days for your muscles to fully recover from stress. Two to three training sessions a week will be enough. Combined with the right diet, you'll have thinner, more toned thighs within a month's time. Eat food rich in protein. Eggs, fish, cheese, milk, yogurts, beans, and nuts should become frequent items on your menu. Protein will have you feeling fuller for longer. It'll also keep you energized throughout the day. Which means you won't be reaching for the sugary stuff. Yeah, your body kind of sets you up for failure on that one. Your brain wants an instant energy boost, so it puppeteers you over to the fridge, you grab a soda, over to the cabinet, mmm, cookies. But not this time, brain! I'm in control now! Drink more water, too. It should cut your salt intake down. When you reach for chips, your brain is probably just thirsty for water. It thinks, hmm, this salt will make him chug some H2O. Yes, it's the perfect plan. <laughs> what really ends up happening? I wolf down the whole bag and wash it down with soda. And if you can't find time out of your day to do some training, fit the exercises into stuff you do anyway. Walk to the kitchen in lunges. Grab a garbage bag with squats. Don't forget to wave to your neighbor while doing the jumping jacks. Hey Susan, sup? <laughs>